that has quickened us this morning. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for what you will do in our midst. We say thank you that shackles will be broken today. Health will be made perfect to your people today. Father, as many beings that people will bring before you today, they will come home, their life will never be the same. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallowed be your name, Father, we thank you. We give you glory, we say thank you. We give you honor, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name and in church say,
The Lord say unto my Lord, Lord, the Lord say unto my Lord, sit down. Sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemy thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. The people shall be willing in the days of thy power, in the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the, do the door, door of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike thy king through king in the days of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the head over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Amen. Amen. The scripture says, It is a good thing to give praises unto his holy name. For out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, he has perfected praise. Why don't we open our mouth to praise and thank him for all the blessings oh, we have Father, enjoyed. we thank you, we bless you, we thank you, Lord. Father, we have a thank you, Lord. Hallow be your name, Be Lord. safe and glory. We you, have been Father. good. Thank you, Lord. You, you have been good. good. No matter what anyone it's says, you have been really good. good God. You have been a gracious Father. Father, we turn all praises. And we give you all we the turn praise. all praises. We turn all praises. We turn all praises. In Jesus' resurrected name. Amen. 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 According to John 5, 4, it reads, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Repeat after me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit release the angels, release the angels of, possibility of possibility to stir up the miraculous, up the miraculous in, our services. in our services. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit release, the angels, release the angels of possibility, of possibility to stir up the miraculous, up the miraculous in our services. In our services. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit release the angels. A possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Let us begin to pray. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release the angels of possibility to stir up the miraculous in our services. Holy Spirit, release Release the angels of possibilities to stir up the miraculous in our services. In Jesus' resurrected name, amen. Our next prayer will be read from Luke chapter 1 verse 38. And it says, 
And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Everybody repeat after me. Father, Father let this year, let this year answer, to me, answer to me according to the prophecy of next level. According to the prophecy of next level. Father, Father let this year, let this year answer, to me, answer to me according to the prophecy of next level. According to the prophecy of next level. Father, Father, let this year, let this year answer to me, answer to me according to the prophecy of next level. According to the prophecy of next level. Let us begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the let name of Jesus. Answer to me, let this year to answer to me according level. to your word. Holy in the name Spirit, of Jesus. Let this year. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. The and the angel departed from her. Father, let this year answer to me, answer to me according, according, to according to the prophecy of, of next level. level. Oh, let this year Father, answer to me according to your word. To me, let it be to, to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to the next level prophecy. Let this year answer to me according to the prophecy of next level. Let this year answer to me spiritually. Let this year answer to me financially. Let this year answer to me emotionally. Let this year answer to me with blessings throughout the rest of the year and forever. Let this year answer to me according to the prophecy of next level in the name of Jesus. Let this year answer to me according to your word in the name of Jesus. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Father, let this year answer to me according the prophecy of next level in, in the name Jesus of Jesus. Name we are praying. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight. It's an invitation. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my youth upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. I have been invited this morning. You have been invited. If you lack rest, if you lack peace, God is inviting you today to come. He said, Come unto me. If you need rest, in any area of your life that seems you have been defeated, God is calling you this morning to bring those issues before him because he wants to help you. He's calling you. All you have to do is come on. How do we come? Come with your heart open and say, I am the one you are calling. Here I am. Help me. Whatever that issue is, Tell it to God this morning. Unsafe children, unsafe family member, the ones that are looking to for job, whatever that issue of concern is, God is asking you to come and bring it before Him even this morning. He said, I can teach you out. And it's also said in the book of John 15 and 5 C. For without me, you can do nothing. Whatever that issue is, God is asking you to bring it before you today because he is the only one that can perform all those things for you. Begin to pray. Ask God what you want to see. What do you want to come to become a testimony? This is the acceptable time, even right now. Up until now, you have not asked. Ask until your joy is full. To overflow that is flowing to many people around you. You have been known to be a, a troublemaker. But God will to turn you into trouble solver. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have been known to be lacking. You are always the one coming for help. God wants to turn your life to the one helping people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever your shame is. The one that you are looking online. That you are listening online. The one that is in the hospital. God is telling you now. That I am able to help you. 
I can give you a brand new beginning because I make all things new. God is telling you even this time, forget about the former things because I, the Lord, is doing a new thing. The newness of that thing, only him can perform it. And he's telling you now, bring those issues of concern to me. You think it's too, it's not a big deal. God don't care about that little stuff. But God is saying, I care about what you care about. Whatever makes your heart ache, make my heart ache because you are my son and you are my daughter. If you need healing, he is the healer. He wants to heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. He can do it. If you lack wisdom, he's asking you to come to him because he gives wisdom for as many people that ask in the name of Jesus. Don't get tired. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let the devil lie to you and say, are you the only one you have been asking that thing? God doesn't care about that. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God wants to help you he wants to heal you. He wants to give you a brand new beginning. He is the only one that can do it. And he's telling me, one, if somebody is looking at me and say, what I have done, nobody can forgive me. God say, as you are asking me for forgiveness through the name of my son, Jesus, I will remember those sins no more. Forgive yourself because I have forgiven you. And that is what God is telling you even this morning. Everything that is done in the kingdom is done by faith. Only by faith can we draw water from the well of salvation. Let's begin to bring our prayer to an end by thanking God because it is already done. Father, we thank you. We bless you. You are the Father that answers prayer. You don't store it up just to have how many prayer requests you have, but you answer them. You say thank you for answering this prayer as your people present their case before you even this morning. For those that are online, we thank you because you're going to answer their prayer. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' name, and the church say, Amen. Amen. It's a blessing time. Envelope, please raise your hand and someone will bring you one. Wave your envelopes, wave your hands. Thank God for your jobs. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for your businesses. Thank you, Father. Thank God for the works of your hands. Thank God for, for His abundance. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our offering. For all those that are watching, um, if you want to give to the ministry, if you led by the Holy Spirit to give to the ministry, uh, go to gospelofpossibility.org and we have options to give. Amen. And God bless you for giving. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. As we give, Father, today we declare and we stand upon your word that when we give that you shall supply all our needs. Father, we give today cheerfully, we give joyfully, we give freely, we give liberally, Father, that you may, that, and we stand on your word, Father, that says that uh, your windows of, open, of heaven will open and pour down blessings. Father, we thank you. Some, sometimes people, we give because, and we don't expect anything in return, but your word says, your, your, that's not what your word says. We should be expected of, of, of our giving. When we give, we should be expected. 
So expect right now in Jesus' name. Expect that when you give that you receive. Expect that your that that favor will go before you. Expect that you will have a job, that you will have better jobs, increase, advancements, promotions in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for giving us ideas, ways of using the finances that you have given upon us. Father, we we um, all this we give that you for the extension of your kingdom. Not just to better our lives, but to better you, to extend your kingdom in Jesus' name. We'll come back with testimonies and testimonies of your 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 abundance, not only financially, but spiritually, emotionally, emotionally. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. And then we come at it's all in your name and for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you again. It's good, it's to, see good you again. to see you again. It's good to see you again. Hallelujah. It's good to see you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just begin to bless God. Thank you, Father. Let's begin to bless His name. The last Sunday in the month of the last Sunday in the month of September. October. October. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. You have kept my family, my children, the household of possibility. You have kept each and every one of us. You kept us intact. 
Nothing was broken. Nothing was missing. Lord, we lift you up and magnify your name, Lord. There's no one like you. Am I the only one in the house? Come on, open. Let there be echoes in the air. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship bless your holy name you are great you do miracles so great opportunity to come before your throne in the presence there is fullness of joy at the right hand there are pleasures forevermore thank you for the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth thank you because you are the God of wisdom Thank you for the wisdom that we have seen you exhibit in our lives. And if we are wise enough, as the scriptures have said, that wisdom is justified by its children. Because there is value in wisdom. And so Lord, we have come to learn again, what are the features of the wisdom that is from above so we will not be limited to the wisdom of the earth so we will not 
be molested by the diabolical wisdom so that the educated and the learned will not think they are the best but that the wisdom that is from above is pure and what is the purity in it how do we get pure by the wisdom of God is by listening and allowing the word of God to dwell in our heart thy word as we kept in that in our heart O Lord that we may not sin against you Lord teach us again by your wisdom and let the empowerment of your wisdom lift us up O Lord at the end of today's service let us know truly well that you are bountifully dealt with us we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we shout hallelujah unto your name and everybody shout a thunder is profitable for what? For direction. Why? Because a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. Wisdom is profitable to direct wherever we need so wisdom is the footmark or the footprint of every believer. And that's why I know that today, being the anointed service, every one of you as the oil come upon you, the wisdom of God rests upon you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we are going to talk about the astonishing part of wisdom. We are going to talk about two people that have rocked the world by the way the wisdom of God operated in their life. Because of time, quickly, the theme of the Bible passage of today can be found in Mark chapter 6 verse 2. Astonishing wisdom. Somebody shout it out loud. Astonishing wisdom. Come on, shout it out loud Astonishing again. Astonishing wisdom. There's a level of wisdom, as you know. But when the level has turned into an astonishment, that means you have become a wonder to your world. Glory to God. Astonishing wisdom. Wisdom that is from above is described as astonishing. Mm. There is no one as I was looking. There is no one. Get ready. First King chapter 3. There is no one. I have searched through the scriptures. There was one man that everybody knew. We know him very well because of the display of God's wisdom operating in his life. We talk about when you talk about King Solomon, you talk about the man that was exemplary in the display of God's wisdom operating in his life. As you know, Solomon is the son of Bathsheba, Bathsheba being the wife that uh, David, you know, uh, took from Uriah, or was, uh, yeah, Uriah. And uh, married and had, that was the second, you know, child that a woman was going to have for David. And so David promised 
that he was going to ascend the throne. Not that he, 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 he said it then, but as the years was going on, he declared that he said this boy must be the king. But see, I have found out that a king, a president, a leader, the only thing he needs is wisdom. What makes a leader a great leader is what? Wisdom. wisdom. You don't need to go to war. People go to war, but you need to get a plan for the war. You don't need to be the economist because there are some economics that is already living in the country that can give you suggestion. And based on what is presented, they will begin to now operate and give you what you need. And then the king or the president or whosoever it is that is the leader makes decision. So a leader is, a great leader is described as someone that makes great decisions. How many of you is in the house now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it has no respect for gender. It has no respect <laughs> for color. Wisdom has no respect for gender. It has no respect for color. color. Hello? So I'm saying again, children of God, if you are born again and if you know Christ, and I'm saying this with genuine sympathy for everyone even that is fighting or that might be fighting a, a losing battle that when you get with Christ he will give you the wisdom in order to operate I said this kind of wisdom is not the type that you'll find in colleges it's not the type that you'll find with common men which is called common sense, common sense. It's not the kind that you go to school to learn. Those things come together. Uh, they cannot sum up to what we are talking about here. The wisdom from God exceeds that. That's why we call it astonishing wisdom. wisdom. Somebody shout astonishing wisdom. Astonishing wisdom. The book of James chapter 3, you know, highlights to us all those kinds of other wisdom that we can always bend towards, but it's not the finality of wisdom. Quickly, let's look at the life of Solomon. First King chapter 3, starting from um, verse 3. First King chapter 3, starting from verse 3. Ah. And, Solomon loved the and Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in this Hold on. And Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon wrote the book of, of Proverbs as well. You know what it says? And Solomon loved the Lord. It says, The wisdom of God is the beginning. The love of God is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Quickly. You find it? Proverbs 9, 10. The love of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the same thing as the love of God. You love God so much so, it's not the fear of trembling. But it's the fear of what is this kind of wisdom? What is this kind of man that is too great? There's no one to be compared unto you. That's why we don't call God the greatest God. When we call God the greatest God, that means there's something that is below it. There's nothing below it. There's nothing after him. Is God by himself. So there's no comparison. There's no great, greater, greatest. Are you feeling me? It's only great because that's only him. Is it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Shout it out loud, everybody. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Two more times. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One more time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So as you are getting wisdom, make sure you get the understanding. I've told us time and time again, what is understanding again?
Okay, that's what understanding is what you stand on. The the information that you stand on when you need it. Understanding is what? Application. Uh, application. How do you apply now what you know? You you drive and you drive and so you drive. Uh, you went to uh, you you drove online. Huh? You learn how to drive online. And then all of a sudden they put you behind the steering wheel. And you are zero instead of you to be hero. So there is no understanding. It doesn't translate. So that is zero understanding. So some people, you know, acquire so much information, which is the wisdom part of it. And they have more knowledge and more knowledge. They get all these things. But yet they could not really apply it to the daily life. So by the wisdom of God, we gather in the knowledge of him. That means that we are knowledgeable about what the kingdom of God holds. The kingdom of God holds wisdom for you beyond measure. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Alright, let's roll over to that first king chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. So it began with the right foundation. And if the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? When you are not born again, the wisdom of God cannot operate. When you are not sold out to Christ, when, care, when, when Christ has not become your love, your first love, no way the wisdom of God can flow through you. Turn to the person next to you and ask them, are you born again? Are you born again? Yes. The only way to operate in full-fledged wisdom is to be born. Amen. That means that you have surrendered your life or better yet, submit. Remember I played with those two? Surrender means what? You give up. That means you have no say. But submission means that you are willing. That means that you are willing. willing. That you are what? Willing. Willing. So you laid it out willingly. Jesus said, no one can take my life. I lay it down. That means I submit it on my own will. And by my own will, I can take it back up. Isn't that what he did? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he did over 2,000 years ago. He laid it down and he picked it back up. I see the wisdom of God operating in your life from today in the name of Jesus. Alright, let's go. And Solomon loved the Lord. I hope you are writing things down. Or you did dream it. And Solomon loved the Lord. If you want to know the secret of Solomon's wisdom, here's the foundation. He loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. I'm not hearing everybody. He loves the Lord. He come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David, his father. And he sacrificed burnt offering. That's what he gave at that time. It's not so much about the heart, but it's about the heart. But then, with burnt offering in high places. Verse 4. And the king went on to Gibeon to sacrifice. He went to serve the Lord. And as for that was the great high place, how much did he sacrifice? Lavishly. The Bible says, a thousand burnt offering that Solomon offered upon the altar. He was trying to match with. But you know one thing? You can't match with with God. You cannot outgive God. You cannot do what? Outgive God. So he gave at the altar, huh? So in that night, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God asked him, Come on. What shall I give you? You have given me and I'm ready to show you. We transact in the kingdom. That's how we get things. That's how we do things. Everything is about transaction. You you give up your own belief for your for his faith. You give up your money for increase. 
That's it, exchange. We are always exchanging. That it's over in the Old, Old Testament. You know about Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. Or Isaac. Mm -hmm. Or even Jacob. Go and get me some venison. And so I can bless you. So he brought something so he gets some back. God is not a taker. God is a giver. But for you to get overflow, there must be a giving. Say give, and it shall be given unto you. Huh? How? Press, Press down. down. Shake it together. together. Running over. Run over. Shall men. Men has been commanded to give you something. Oh! Men have been commanded to give you something. You are not here. Don't don't be distracted. Men, mankind, the kind that is common to everyone, have been commanded to give you something. Just as Jesus was given something at his birth, they don't know where he was. They located him by the wisdom of God. I decree man will give you things in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, they are looking for you. But until you have done the transaction, sometimes don't say. Most times those things don't come. They don't come by wishes. We pray. We get answers. Transaction. We sing. We get inspired. Transaction. We ask, and then we receive transaction. In Gibeon, God ask him, now that you have done this, ask me what you want. Remember I told you, do not ask for money. This is where I got the note. I got it from Solomon. Examples are the best samples. Are you following me? All right, let's see what Solomon asked for. You know the story. Verse 6. Read it. In Solomon said, and Solomon said, yeah. Read it from the mic. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are reading like we are. Let's, uh, let's start again. Let's start again. One, two, go. And Solomon said, Thou art show unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. Yes. According to as he walked before thee in truth, uh -huh. and in righteousness, and in righteousness, and in uprightness, uh -huh. of heart with thee. Yes. And thou hast kept in for him this great kindness, and thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, mm -hmm. as it is this day. All right, verse seven. And now, now, O Lord, O Lord. Lord. Thou hast made thy servant king. You have made me, Solomon, the servant of God, to become king. Instead of my David, my father. Uh -huh. And I am but a little child. I am a little child. I know not how to go out of coming. Mm -hmm. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people. And I just happen to be the leader, and I happen to be in the midst of your people, Lord. Which thou hast chosen. Uh -huh. A great people. Uh -huh. That cannot be numbered. Uh -huh. Nor counted for multitude. Okay. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Give therefore your servant. What? An understanding heart. Uh huh. To judge thy people. Okay. That I may discern between good and bad. Both hands. Both who is able to judge this way so great a people. The Lord. That Solomon had asked the thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing. You have asked this thing. And what is the thing? Wisdom. He has asked for wisdom. For discernment. Uh huh. And has not asked for thyself. You have not asked for yourself long, long life. life. What are you looking at? Read. Neither has asked riches. You have not asked for riches. 
has asked the life of my enemy. You have not asked for your enemy to be slew. But has asked for thyself. But you ask for yourself. Understanding to discern Understanding to discern judgment. That's what you need a leader for. Not a divider, but a unifier. Not leaders of some set of people, but a leader of all people. For we are created equally. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo! Lo means see. I have given you what? A wise, a wise and an understanding heart. So there is no one like you. Uh huh. Come on, come on, come on. You have not asked me this. Both riches and honor. Put riches and honor. Uh huh. So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all the days. But if thou will. Walk in my ways and keep my statutes. I will give you length of days. Uh huh. Solomon, I walk. Uh huh. It was a dream. And he found out it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem. Uh huh. And stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Uh huh. And offered up burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And offered peace offerings. Uh huh. And made a feast to all his servants. Okay. Then came the two. Watch this. He has not even gone too far. Let's go. That were all unto the king. And stood before him. The one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. I was a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was also delivered, and we were together. There was no strange with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. She slept on the baby. And she arose at midnight. And took my son from beside me, while my handmaid slept, and laid in her bosom, and laid a dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child son, behold, he was dead. But when I considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. They said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Are you reading? Thou speak before the king. Get up and see him. Then said the king, The one, this is thy son, thy living. And this is the son that died. So say, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a soul. And they brought a soul before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child into two. Watch this. And give half to the one. You should be familiar with the story, huh? And the half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was from to the king. For a power yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child. Mm -hmm. And is no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. 
Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child. Uh -huh. And in no wise say, She is the mother thereof. I mean, you see, if it's your child, you don't want it dead. You want your child dead. So that evidently, he was able to discern that if it was that person's child, they wouldn't want that child to die. So one says what? Kill it. Kill it. Another one says, oh, instead of you killing, if you're not going to give it to him, just let her have it. So what happened? They what? They the what made them fear the king? They saw that the wisdom, that the wisdom of, God. of God, the wisdom of God, of God was, was in him to do judgment. All of you that are in possibility ministry, I want you to get prepared because the Lord is taking you into a far place. Amen. All the trainings that you are getting from here, the teachings that you are getting from here, is to prepare you for your next levels. Managers, CEOs, Presidents is coming from this ministry. Amen. Senators, governors, Amen. legislators are coming from this ministry. Amen. Because we know that with all the knowledge and the understanding that you have acquired over a period of time, when it's time to execute judgment, you will do the right thing. Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not just going to be struck down on abortion only, but you'll be struck down with how people are treated. Are you listening? You are all around. Everything that is ungodly, you will root them out. You will become speaker of the house. Hello? Amen. You will become what? Speaker of the house. Because they are the ones that make legislation that we use. And guess what? If you don't like leadership, what do you do? Yeah? You become one. Aspire to become one. Someone that will buy into what you believe in. Sponsor them. That's why we sponsor our children. That's why Jesus is sponsoring us. To do what? To go into the world and preach the gospel. It's not for the church. It's for outside people. If you are here, say I'm here. I'm here. So we see the wisdom of God exemplified in the life of Solomon and Solomon loved the Lord and the people fear him and Solomon feared the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom God says I will give you a kind of wisdom that it cannot be matched by anybody around the world I still believe till today there's no one's riches that are able to match up with Solomon Go and read or just you have your Bible app. Listen to just listen to it from let's say first king chapter one. The man had forty thousand uh uh armies. I'm not talking about the ones that fight that guard him. Twelve thousand just to be around him. His provision was just extraordinary. He was a little extra. Now you mind you, you know, we need to be careful. Because Solomon was one of those child or you know that really didn't suffer. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to suffer, but you have to go through certain things in order to appreciate things. He didn't go through anything. Though he asked for wisdom, but you know, before then, prior to that, he never walked like his dad. His dad never lost any battle that he went to fight, and he fought so many battles i.e. the Philistines and he won all of them by the wisdom of God because when he fights all the time guess what happens he fights all the time and when he fights 
you will ask the Lord, Lord, how do I approach this thing? Lord, how should I do this thing? Lord, how do I go? Sometimes God will say, go in the backside. Sometimes God will say, no, you don't need to go. You don't need to. Ah, too many people. Ah, you, you just go. You take care of them. And everything will be done. So over and again, he was able to rule and reign in the midst of his enemy, like the Bible passage we read today. He says, rule in the midst of thy enemies. Rule in the midst of thy enemy. Rule in the midst. Do you know how to do that? We know how to rule amongst friends. People who buy into your own idea. But we don't know most times how to rule in the midst of our enemies. Your opposition. That you are ruling among them by wisdom. People who don't like you. Oh, you're too short. Oh, you're too fierce-skinned. Oh, you're too black. Oh, you have an accent. Everything to disqualify you. <laughs> Ruling in the midst of them by the wisdom of God. Can I say this real quick? When I say rule in the midst of you don't need to fight to be equal with anyone. I said that last week and I'm repeating it again to the whole world. Those who are hearing me, you are fighting. Woman is fighting for equality in the house. <laughs> uh, some people are fighting to be equal with them. The person that you are trying to be equal with, you are bigger than them. Stop trying to fight to be equal with anyone. You are bigger than whom you say you want to be equal to. They are lower than you. It doesn't matter what's the color, what is the race. As long as you are in Christ, you are bigger. Don't fight for it. The wisdom of God will teach you to rule in the midst of thy enemies. Let's look at that real quick. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, May David's talking. Let's read. Verse 2. The Lord strengthened the Lord of thy strength out of the Zion means church. Uh huh. Rule thou. Right in the midst of them. He's not. Watch this. God does not normally take those things away. You learn to deal with them. God could have turned some things around. But he won't sometimes. He did not give the children of Israel, Canaan, all at once. He gave it to them how? Little by little. little, by little. When God wants to do something, he doesn't take that turn away. All the time. The people that hate you, he puts you right dead into their midst. They can kill you, and you can kill them because there are many. So what do you do? You live in them. You live among them. What is Israel today? In the midst of hostility. Yet, the country is thriving. Small place in the midst of all the opposition. And when Jesus returns, he returns to Israel. Hmm? He came through that and is returning to that. So it's not going to get in our way. The issue of equality or racism has not been a new thing under the heaven. It has always been. Watch this. Even people don't like each other to begin with in the beginning. Now they have an accomplice in order to make their agenda to work. Stop fighting those battles. Get wisdom. You rule in the midst of them. What kind of wisdom? Get rich. Stop thinking poverty. Read. Go to school. Rule 
fool in the midst of the enemy. Woo! Rule in the midst of the enemy. They are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. Amen. Both of you are coexisting. But you are going to rule over them. Shout it loud, amen. amen. Don't worry about them. Look at the one that can make a king out of you. you are, when you look to those who are on the same level as you are, you become a wood or you become a pecker. Like a bird. They will talk about you. They will talk about you. They will gossip. Guess what? This is not about race. It's about identity. Who are you? Are you black? Are you white? Who are you? Like some people will say, who is you? It's an identity. What exactly are you? Not who are you again, because you don't know who you are, so we start with what are you. <laughs> Rule in the midst of them. They are not going to go anywhere. You must learn how to adjust. You must have to pray. Because regardless of where you go, they are still going to be there. Systemic, op systemic evil has always been there even when Jesus was alive or was here. So what, what makes you think that it's going to go away? Fighting those kind of battles is a little more. Not saying that you should not make your voice known. Mm -mm. But here is what it is. Anytime you are fighting a little battle, you are not using wisdom. Wisdom says, okay, I'm not as strong as you are today. Look at when David escaped. David escaped the anger of Saul. Watch this. I believe God is blessing someone this day. David escaped the wrath of Saul by himself. Are you listening? And he left, he ran off because Saul was trying to kill him because Saul recognized that the hand of God was upon him. And so as he began to go, God began to multiply him. The people began to come to him. I said the people begin to come to him, so he begin to polish them. He begin to train them. So one became two, two, four. So he had some level of uh, um, uh, army in him. So he was raising them up, and he became and they became great men. These are people who, in their normal sense, would uh, they are called nothing. They are called nothing. nothing. So David took them, he polished them, taught them how to fight, taught them how to hold ammunition, sharpened them. Now, Saul had a slew of supporters, armies to back him up. In fact, when he left, the king was sleeping outside. Why? Because he was chasing one innocent man. By the wisdom of God, he could not catch David. He, David was running from one cave to another. He had intel. Those whom he came and defected from Saul over to him. They called them nobody. Are you following me? And they became his support over the period of time. They will always stay around. The people that stay, that hate you, is it that God kills them or sometimes God does not kill them for a long <laughs> You wish them dead, but sometimes they don't die that quick. Because God wants to prove a point. Rule thou! Rule thou! Possibility, rule thou! In the 
the midst of thy enemies. Put your name there and recite it. Aki, thou will rule in the midst of thy enemies. Come on, shout it out loud. Shout it out one more time. Aki, thou shalt rule in the midst. Wisdom is what we need. We can fight with carnal weapons. It will do just enough, but it will not do all you want. That's just the wisdom of God. Fight. But the fighting that you need to fight comes by acquiring wisdom. Go to school. If you didn't go to school, learn. Learn how to read. Present yourself. Be rich. What else? You begin to get to places where they say, no, you can't get to. You know, when have you been to hotels? Sometimes when they say there's no room. Huh? You say there's no room. Oh, let me check my computer. Oh, what just came up? Okay, you see? But folks who didn't do this, there's no room, there's no room in the inn. <laughs> Are you bragging? He just said thank you. Can you look again? But if I beg you, please. This is my family. We don't have a place to stay. We are locked up. You are locked up? Well, there's no room here. <laughs> By the wisdom of God and the riches of God, you will see that you begin to break new grounds. I see God doing for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly, because of time, let's go over to that first Samuel chapter 10. We see the wisdom of God that exasperates a woman, the queen of Sheba, came all the way to come because she had been hearing about the fame and the wisdom of Solomon. You know, people were still trying to be matching wits with you. You know, you wear Tommy Go figure and then they want to wear Comic Con figure. <laughs> Everybody is contending with each other. So, uh, First Samuel, chapter, uh, First King, chapter 3, no, First King, chapter 10. First King, chapter 10. Not First Samuel. First King chapter 10, quickly. The wisdom of God that makes you rule in the midst of your enemy. The wisdom of God makes you rule right dead in the, <laughs> dead into the midst of your enemy. They came and they wanted to arrest, uh, I believe, Elijah, Elijah. And they did not know that they have come right into the midst of their enemy. They, they, that's just the wisdom of God altogether. The wisdom of God will bail you out in Jesus' name. Amen. And when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, he was carrying the name of the Lord. He knew it wasn't education. He knew it wasn't common sense. He knew this was God. So as God was operating in Solomon's life, he was displaying an enormous amount of wealth. All right. The name of her, she came to prove him with hard questions. Watch this. Watch this. And when the king, and she came to Jerusalem. Come on, read. You read. Slews of gifts. Slowly, slowly. Uh-huh. Very much so much gold. Uh huh. And precious oh man. And when she, was come to she, she came to David to Solomon. She she and he was uh, entertained. Mm -hmm. I don't like this verse. Let me, if you read it in a new international version, okay. it says that before she could ask the question solomon could know what the question was she even he even told her her question so if somebody tells you the question that you have not asked wouldn't you have the answer 
That's exactly what happened. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. Go back to verse 2. Arriving at Jerusalem with a great caravan with camels carrying spices. So let's go. She came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had in her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the king saw, when the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built. Watch this. The food on his table organization. The sitting of his officials. How they were put together. The attending servants in their robes. His cup bearers and the burnt offering he had he made at the temple of the Lord. He was well, another version. I wish I had that version that I was studying. It says she was astonished. She 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 was out of breath. She was what? Out of breath. She was what? Out of breath. She was out of breath. Let me quickly see if I will find it. She was out of breath. Is that NIV? Uh -huh. Yeah, it took her breath away. I mean, you know, there's a thing, <laughs> there's one thing to live in a project. There's another thing to live in uh, uh, subsidized housing. There's another level to have a detached apartment. And there's another level to live with single family with all vinyl. And there's, a <laughs> and there's another level in all brick houses, you know, but by the time you start getting to some places, they, actually they said the, the biggest house in Tennessee was sold this past week for 11 million or 11, 11 million dollars or something like that. There are mansions. She was exhausted. She thought she was going to match with, with Solomon. Let's see. He's Went up to the house of the Lord, the burnt offering, the kind of offering that he offered. I'm not talking about lean, lean meat. You know, like, I'm talking about the kind of meat that even the way those bulls begin to walk, you, you shake your head like, man, this is thick. She was what? Breathless and overcome. What? The servants and the, 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 the robes that they wear. Could you imagine? That took her breath away. Verse 6. She said to the king, It is a true report. I heard it on my own land. Of your act and sayings and wisdom. Uh -huh. I did not believe it until I came and my eyes had seen Behold, the half was not told to me. That means that I, I, they could only tell me just a little bit, maybe half, until I came. You have added wisdom and goodness exceeding the fame I have heard. Somebody shout God's wisdom. God's wisdom. Happy are your men. They are not serving with grudge. Happy are those of your servants who stand continually. They were smiles. Is that what you want? You can have all you want. That's what you want? Take all you want. Oh, you don't have enough. Don't worry. We'll fulfill. Take everything you want. In the kingdom, they don't do that. You, only take, you are only apportioned something. But in Solomon's kingdom, you get as much as you want. How big do you want your house to be? Do you like this land or you want the one on the hills? Do you want the one that is on the valley? Hmm? Do you like your road tarred? Or do you want a uh, concrete? How do you like it? Do you like your bedroom downstairs or it's going to be paid for? Huh. Those 
Those are the things that is awaiting for you. That is awaiting for me by the wisdom of God. That's what we operate in as children of God. The kind of wisdom that makes you an astonishing person. It takes breath away from your enemies. They cannot hold their breath. Breathless. Breakthrough. Breathless. Breakthrough. Breathless. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. You know, it gets to a point when your enemies have tried everything and they have not succeeded. You remember you are ruling in the midst of them. All they have to do is come knock on your door and they are the one that will give you Christmas gift. That means they have been exhausted. So the only way to kind of gain some uh, attention from you is to buy you gifts. The Bible says, if a way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Because they have exhausted everything they could have had or done for against you. They have called the police, they have called everything. They have searched your record, it was clean. There is nothing. Even if it wasn't clean, God made it clean. And then they wonder, okay, where else can we get him? What else can he do wrong? How can we make him do wrong? Because every of his wrong, God has made it right. By the wisdom of God. That's why we must ask for wisdom. That's why we must apply wisdom. Wisdom is all we need. Happy are these, your servant, who stand continually before you. Hearing your wisdom, when you walk with the wise, you become what? Wise. wise. And the companions of foolish people, you will become foolish. So watch out who is keeping company of you or who you are accompanying. The wisdom of God. Somebody shout the wisdom of God. Makes me astonishing. When something is astonishing, that means it, it, it's, it, it be, it's beyond expression. They can't describe it. The words alone. Now, we read what Jesus um, uh, Solomon did over here. Now, Jesus displayed even another level of breakthrough order of wisdom for us to begin to glean from. The wisdom of God expressed. Not wisdom that is in the head. They call it head knowledge. I'm talking about the wisdom experienced. <laughs> you feed 5,000 with what? Five and two. Not even enough. To begin with, by the wisdom of God, he was able to know what to do. Because the Bible says he himself knew what to do. He was just trying them to see what they would do. But they said, we can't do anything. Even if we work for the whole year, it's not going to be enough. Let's cry out for wisdom. Wisdom that is able to defeat our enemies. Because we are meant to rule in the midst of them. It's not about anything, but it's about who you are. Are you understanding? The contention is not because you are a female. The contention is not because you are a female, but the contention is because you are a child of the living God. Are you understanding? Because even though they didn't like you, all of a sudden, you start to see all kinds of race. They just start to join hands together. And like, I thought it was just a black thing. I thought it was just a white thing. No, the black, the white, the Korean, everyone would join together to fight you. So it's not about anything else, but because you call yourself Son of God. They feel inferior to you. And so they will fight you until you have given up. Say we have won. Don't give them that breathing room. Fight a good fight 
of faith. Fight a good fight of faith. It's not so much of you. It's the Christ in you. Fight a good fight of faith. You will always live among them. They're not going anywhere. I keep repeating this as the Holy Spirit is allowing me to. It will bless someone. Try, stop trying to make yourself equal. <laughs> Woman, stop trying to make yourself equal with your husband. It's never meant to be equal. Like that. Stop trying to make yourself equal. Chances are, the one you are trying to make equal with is lesser than you. Get wisdom. That's it. When you get wisdom, you'll be able to rule in the midst of them. Do you know something? Even your husband, when you use wisdom with him, You will get the best of him. Your wife, if you use wisdom with her, you will always get the best of her. Just apply wisdom. Your boss, apply wisdom. Stop trying to fight a losing battle. It won't be won like that. It has to be won through the wisdom of God. It puts men, it puts God's children are put above. Don't be sucked into the inferiority complex. Nobody is better than you. Don't allow anyone to tell you we're going to give you. Take it. It's mine. You're not giving me. Who gives something to you, anybody? If anyone... I remember when my kids started using the phone and all of a sudden they said, oh, free, you have won this. So they will, they will click it. You know what they're clicking? Cookies. Nothing is free. Even salvation is not free. Somebody paid the price for it. So when we do think that uh, all of a sudden, you know, that uh, uh, things are just going to, you know, somebody just going to hand you what they've had. Have you forgotten the story? He said, how can, I, how can you enter into the house of a strong man and take your good without first binding the strong man? Then you can operate and take what belongs to you. But until then, as long as the strong man is loose, your goods cannot be loose to you. Take it. It's yours. Take it by understanding. Acquire wisdom. Acquire understanding by doing it. Get money. And you will defeat everything possible that stands on your way. Let us pray. Lord, I am exhausted. I don't know about you. I am exhausted trying to do things my own way. It has not maximized the way that I want it to. I am tired of fighting when I know that I cannot win. But you have called, I recognize in this preaching today that you have raised me up to rule in the midst of my enemies. I understand that Sometimes they will not go away. I must rule in the midst of them. You begin to rule by the blood of Jesus. You begin to rule by the word of God. You begin to rule by the nail piercings. Everything that Jesus died for is to will it over to you. So that you can now begin to maximize your inheritance in him. You are equal with God.
Yes, you heard right. You are equal with God. He said, I have said, ye are gods. All ye children of the most high God. Paul was beaten by a poisonous snake. <laughs> and they waited and waited and waited that he was going to die. But he just kept minding his own business. You know what they came up, the conclusion is? They said, he must be a God. The disciples did some healing. They began to celebrate them. They began to worship them. He said, no, don't do that. The wisdom of God is going to be able to transcend your culture. Thank you, Lord. The wisdom of God is able to transcend your color. Nobody will have given Joseph a vice president in a country that he does not have no roots. Nobody could have given Daniel a position. Daniel served many kings. He outlasted many kingdoms. If you are not impressed, I'm impressed. Because look at Joseph. He had no roots at all. It's only God that can do such. He became a vice president by the wisdom of God. Stop running after people to make you something. They will take him from you, but if God puts you there, nobody can take you out. By the wisdom of God. Lord, I am exhausted. Fill me with your wisdom today. Come and open your mouth and begin to pray. Except you are not exhausted. There's a difference between you trying to pull something. There's a difference between having a forklift to actually lift it up. Come unto me. All ye that are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke. You know what the yoke is? Learn from me. Go to school of the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Go to school of the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things. Fill me with the Spirit. Open your mouth. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of wisdom. The rod from Jesse was filled with the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Spirit to express in the form of wisdom to me. Lord, I need your wisdom. Father, fill me with your wisdom. As great as Solomon was. As great as Solomon was, even till date. It cannot measure up with what Christ carried for all his children. A greater than Solomon is here. He was talking about you. You are the one the scripture has been wanting. You are the one the scriptures have been waiting for. Because a greater than Solomon is here. And he's talking about you. A greater than Solomon is here. You have wisdom more than Solomon. You have understanding more than Solomon. A greater than Solomon is here. Are you following me? A greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. And he's talking about me. You are the one the scriptures was telling about. That you are greater than the riches and the personnel that Solomon has or had. Because the spirit of God is in you. The spirit of God is in you. 
You are no longer a slave to sin. You are a child of the living God. You are no longer a slave. You are a son and a daughter that has inheritance. Your father has willed you wisdom and understanding to know how, skill, skill in all areas, information, revelation. Father, we cry to you this day. We cry because we are thirsty that we want your knowledge and understanding to consume us. If you can create heaven and earth, that means that you still have the creativity in us. Let us create man in our own image. In the likeness of him, he created them. Male and female, he created them with wisdom, with wisdom, with wisdom, with wisdom, he formed the earth with understanding. He established the skies and the heavens. Father, we need your wisdom to be able to rule in the midst of our enemies. You have caused us to sit on the throne as king. That is worth all. A king just commands and he stands still. Father, as I anoint your children, let the spirit of wisdom rest upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Alright, come get you some. Come get you, come get you some. The spirit of wisdom rest upon you today in the name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom rest upon you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come get you some. Come get you some. The wisdom of God comes upon you from today in the name of Jesus. You will not operate only in the wisdom of mere men, but you will operate in the wisdom in God's caliber in the name of Jesus. Let the wisdom of God begin to attend to you. No more failures. No more failures. Receive the wisdom of God. Receive the wisdom of God. Receive the wisdom of God. You are not going to be in the same capacity with common men. Yeah, got it. The wisdom of God. Hallelujah. And about saving area. When common men are using common sense. That God kind of sense will come upon you for a creative solution. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody want some? The wisdom of God. Lay hands on yourself. Say the wisdom that is above the one that Solomon exhibited is upon me from today. In the name of Jesus. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The operating, operational wisdom of God. Flow in your life. Flow in your life. Flow. That's what you pray for yourself. Lay hands on yourself and say, let the wisdom of God begin to operate in me. Let the wisdom of God operate in me. Let the wisdom of God operate in me. The wisdom that will buy me places. The wisdom that will make room for me. That will bring me before great men. Let that wisdom begin to be operating in my life. In the name of Jesus, the wisdom, the wisdom of God. When men see me, they will not look and ignore me. They will not look and say, I have nothing. But when I speak, the wisdom that makes even my adversary to be at peace with me, everyone will be going out of their way for me. That is the honor of wisdom that you are receiving and you have received now. Begin to operate in it right now in the name of Jesus. The wisdom of God, let it begin to operate in your life. The wisdom of God begins to operate in your life. The wisdom of God begins to operate in your life. The wisdom of God begins to operate in your life. You will 
give you a mouth and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to gain, say, or resist. The wisdom that makes you win in all battles. The wisdom that makes you a provider. Not a taker, but a giver. The wisdom that is beyond man's comprehension. Receive that wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. You are free to operate in it in the name of Jesus. Receive the wisdom to take your portion in the kingdom of God by force. In the name of Jesus. The wisdom that will make you not to be deniable. That means that you will not be denied what belongs to you. As you are asking, they are releasing. I command that wisdom that has come upon you now to begin to open doors for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 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 In Jesus' name we are praying. Let's shout the great the grace together. We, we shall, shall go out with, with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break before us and sing it. All right, let's take it again. I shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break for us to sing it. The trees of the field will clap their hands for you in Jesus' name. Go and be filled and worship God, even with the wisdom of God that is in you. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday. Freedom.